Hello everyone. Myself, Dr. Arfi, a third year resident, uh, going to present my case series on a genetic disorder that is Jobert syndrome. Aim of my paper will be to study a rare genetic disorder for its various clinical presentation, to discuss its variable phenotypic presentation and radiological pattern, and also to see if there is a correlation between severity of symptoms and the radiological findings. Introduction, Jobert syndrome is a rare genetic heterogeneously inherited disorder named after Mary Jobert in 1969. It is characterized by brainstem and cerebellar malformation and multisystemic affection involving nervous, ocular, gastrointestinal, and urogenital system in varying proportion. It belongs to a primary cilia disease. Primary cilia, which are, immot which are immotile cilia, helps in receiving and transmitting signals they play an important role in growth and function of the neuronal cells, skeleton, retina photoreceptors, kidney tubules, and collecting ducts, and also liver. Jobert syndrome, here I, I would also like to discuss uh, the, uh, that cilia-related uh, disorders are mainly categorized into motile ciliopathies, such as Carter-Jenner syndrome, which uh, most of us are, are aware about, and immotile ciliopathies that we might not have heard much about, and these include Jobert syndrome, nephronephthesis, beadle birded syndrome, and Meckel syndrome. Jobert syndrome and other immortal ciliopathies show pleiotropy and overlapping phenotypes. The term Jobert syndrome related disorder has been adopted to describe various pathological entities with the neuroradiological feature of molar two sign while involving other organs as well. Here uh, in uh, this presentation, we would discuss two cases in a family and both of them having similar complaints, but with different severity. Family history revealed second degree consanguineous marriage. No other prior members in the family were affected. My first case is a child, a six year old child who was brought to OPD in Department of Pediatrics, Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College for evaluation of developmental delay. She could not, according to her mother, she could not sit, stand, or speak. However, there is spontaneous cry and smile. She also has gaze instability. There is no history of any abnormal seizure-like movements. Further questioning to the patient's mother also revealed that she had weak cry since birth, which rose the suspicion of some abnormality. NCCT head was also performed at the age of six months, which was which came out to be normal. Currently, she has poor and delayed developmental milestones. She is not able to stand or sit on her own or with support. She was delivered by an uncomplicated cesarean at the time uh, at uh, nine months of uh, 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 period for uh, indication was late for gestational age. She did not cry at the time of her birth. The postnatal history was negative for any prolonged admission at neonatal ICU. On examining the child, she appeared thin and fragile. She could not. She she could. Uh, she could not uh, stand or sit. Mild facial dysmorphia was noted with a depressed nasal bridge and deepened orbital sockets. She is unable to follow command command and does not follow her gaze on specific object. Ocular examination revealed bilateral horizontal pendulum nystagmus without myopia. The cardiovascular examination was normal. A pulmonary examination revealed a prominent excretory vase without chest indrawing. Examination finding of the cranial nerves were also normal. Motor examination revealed hypotonia with normal tendon reflexes. After examining the child, she was advised uh, by the clinician to undergo um, MRI brain. As a CT head at the age of six months came out to be normal. And this is the MRI brain of the child, where in the first two images, the axial and the uh, coron uh, coronal images we can see that there is a genesis of the cerebellar vermis and there is deepened interpeduncular fossa. For the uh, uh, cuts at the level of midbrain and cerebellum shows thickened, abnormally horizontally placed superior cerebellar peduncles, giving the molar tooth sign. The appearance of the fourth ventricle gave the batwing appearance, also called, called as um, uh, umbrella sign. Here, I would also like to discuss uh, other signs such as buttock sign, which is also described uh, for uh, uh, for Jobert syndrome in coronal image. 
where the, the, there is a midline cleft seen separating the two cerebellar hemispheres due to uh, absent uh, cerebellar uh, vermis. Other signs such as shepherd crook sign is also described in sagittal views of the posterior fossa, where the brainstem and pons makes the shaft of the crook and abnormal superior cerebellar peduncles and cerebellar hemispheres make the arc of the crook. In my fifth, uh, in my fifth image, uh, uh, sagittal T1 weighted image, uh, he, there is thinning of the posterior body and splenium of the splenium of the corpus callosum, which was an additional finding. My second case is a three-year-old boy with the same symptoms and signs as his sister, with different severity. He has developmental delay, however, less severe than his sister. He could sit or stand with support. He also had case abnormality. He could speak by syllables. No history of seizure-like activity was there. Birth history revealed that she was he was delivered by cesarean at the age of nine months. Indication was caught around the neck with meconium aspiration. He weighed approximately 2.4 kg. He didn't cry immediately after birth and was on ventilator for 24 hours. Neurological examinations were normal. Rest of the findings were also normal. After his sister was diagnosed with job birth syndrome and looking uh, after his sign and symptoms, he was also advised MRI brain. And it was uh, very striking that the features were similar to, uh, to, the, uh, to uh, his uh, sister's uh, sisters. Here in the first two images, we can see that there is, uh, uh, there is uh, a genesis of the cerebellar hemisphere as we have seen our first case. There is deep interpeduncular fossa Molar tooth sign is also appreciated. However, umbrella sign was not seen. In the sagittal image, uh, the uh, corpus callosum appeared to be normal for his age. Coming to the discussion part, Jobber syndrome is a rare disorder of central nervous system with the uh, uh, inc incidence of one per one lakh children. Only few cases have been reported till now worldwide. And by 2009, approximately 200 cases have been reported. Both sporadic and autosomal recessive pattern of inheritance has been described. Dr. Mary Jobert and co-workers in 1969 for the first time described four siblings with ataxia, cognitive impairment, eye movement abnormalities, cerebellar vermis agenesis, and episodic tachypnea in a French-Canadian family. Marriott R. in 1997 described this uh, midbrain hindbrain hindbrain malformation on MRI as a result of hypoplasia of the midline cerebellar vermis resembling the cross section of a molar tooth appearance, which is pathognomic for Jobert syndrome. In the same year, it was reported that there is association between Jobert syndrome and renal cystic disorders and liver fibrosis, but in our cases, it did not have any organ disorders and their ultrasonography and lab laboratory findings were normal. The first report and subsequent reports have been determined that Jobert syndrome has autosomal recessive inheritance and mutations in the eight ciliary basal body genes. So far, more than 30 causative genes have been found for the various subtypes of Jobert syndrome related disorders. Backman Gigescu et al. reported TMEM67. C5 ORF42, CC2D2A, two CEP290, and AHI1 gene, which were more frequently found. The AHI1 gene, which is found in 10 to 15% of the patients, and CEP290 is found in 10% of, uh, of the cases, and are, are the most common mutant gene related to Jobber syndrome related disorders. AHI1 is abundant in brain and kidney and weakly expressed in the liver as well. The clinical features of Jobber syndrome related disorders vary from being mild to severe, and it typically presents with the following features, such as abnormal ocular findings, like for, uh, uh, for example, nystagmus, strabismus, ptosis, hypotonia, and ataxia, leading, leading to gait abnormalities, respiratory dysregulation in the form of hyperapnea, apnea episodes, which uh, are usually present at the time of neonatal uh, period, and and gradually uh, uh, diminishes. Developmental retardation owing to the abnormality of cerebellum and brainstem, and typical dysmorphic, dysmorphic features such as hypertellurism, broad forehead, uh, broad uh, mouth with protrusion of tongue or ptosis. The triad of Jobert syndrome includes hypotonia, 
developmental delay and brain stem cerebellar malformation uh, giving the molar tooth sign based on uh, as we have discussed that uh, immotile celiopathies can involve multiple organs so based on the organ involved Francisco et al. classified Jobert syndrome related disorders into six phenotypes. These include pure Jobert syndrome with multiple organ involvement, Jobert syndrome with renal defect, Jobert syndrome with ocular defect, with oculorenal defects, Jobert syndrome with hepatic defects, and with orofacio digital defects. The radiographic features, uh, fe uh, fe features include uh, the molar tooth sign and the batwing configuration, which are the classical imaging findings. Severe hypogenesis to complete agenesis of the cerebell cerebellar hemisphere is characteristic. The superior cerebellar peduncles are thickened and have abnormal horizontal pores. The lack of ped peduncular decussation, which can be assessed by diffusion tensor imaging, often results in a superior vermin cleft. There can be distorted and superiorly pointing cerebellar white matter tract, especially in the posterior cerebellum. Other abnormalities could be inferior olive, uh, abnormal inferior olivary nucleus and uh, supratentorial abnormalities include cortical dysplasia, corpus callosum abnormalities as we have seen in our first case, heterotopic gray matter and encephalosis. In coming to our case scenario, our first case was a six-year-old girl with severe developmental delay. In addition to molar tooth appearance, there was batwing appearance of the fourth ventricle with thinning of the corpus callosum. However, in our second case, with mild symptoms and symptoms and molar tooth appearance, the corpus callosum appeared normal and there was no batwing configuration. So, we have uh, um, uh, we have made a hypothesis that there is a possible correlation between severity of symptoms and radiological findings. However, there is limitation as it is statistically insignificant. Further studies with more number of cases could be performed to prove this correlation statistically relevant. So is the uh, disease prenatally diagnosable? So the answer is uh, yes, it can be diagnosed with but with uncertainty. Diagnosis of Jobert syndrome is commonly made after birth. However, fewer cases of prenatal diagnosis by USG have been made and they are more likely to be misdirected because of some non-specific features that also manifest dandy vocal malformation and cerebello, cranio cerebello cardiac syndrome and many other diseases. Zhu L. et al. in prenatal head sonography found absent for cerebellar uh, vermis with fourth ventricle communicating with the posterior fossa. Molar tooth sign was also seen with enlarged fourth ventricle. Prenatal MRI in the same patient was done. A molar tooth sign was seen with dilated cisterna magna and enlarged fourth ventricle. But the average age at diagnosis of Jobert syndrome is 33 months and therefore it should be considered a syndrome with varying phenotype and it makes it difficult to diagnose the accurate subtype during the newborn period. However, we can get some clue for some abnormality in the brain in highly suspected patients. Coming to the management part, in general, the prognosis of Jobert syndrome is poor. It largely depends on severity of different organ systems. Stilin et al. described variable course in these patients. Some patients die early in the infancy. Some have severe developmental handicaps and others survive with mild developmental delay. The five-year survival rate is 50% and death is usually due to defeating difficulties and respiratory infections. Treatment options are not readily available as this disease onset is uh, during the gestation period. Rehabilitation is the mainstay of management for these patients. Symptomatic and supportive th therapy in the form of physiotherapy and speech therapy could help. Optimal management needs multidisciplinary approach, with special consideration, consideration to respiratory and feeding disorders. Cognitive and behavior, behavioral evaluation also could provide, uh, could be helpful to these young children. Rehabilitation therapy can improve disabilities of patients with Jobert syndrome. Gene analysis is the cornerstone of the disease. However, in our case, due to poor financial status of the patient, genetic study could not be performed. Now to the genetic counseling and its prevention. 
genetic counseling is important for its prevention as it is a as it is a uh, autosomal recessive condition the counseling should include that there is a recurrence rate of 25% that is there are 25% chances of of uh, uh, of uh, having an affected child and 75% chances of having a phenotypically normal child among which 50% will be carrier and therefore consanguineous marriage but uh, in uh, uh, in future um, uh, among uh, uh, his ch uh, their children should be prohibited so i would like to conclude my presentation uh, with the following conclusion that jobert syndrome is a rare disorder of central nervous system with variable clinical presentation the classic imaging findings include molar tooth sign which is pathognomonic of jobert syndrome and a bad wing configuration of the fourth ventricle which could be seen both in ct and mri in our two cases there is a positive correlation between severity of symptoms and neurological findings however many more studies need to be done to prove uh, to prove it uh, it uh, statistically relevant these are the references uh, of uh, my uh, paper thank you